What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Layout tutorial for you. So it's been a while since I've done a layout tutorial. Now that SketchUp 2019 is out, I wanted to um, basically use that to create a new floor plan and also just kind of toy around with the different dashed line options and things like that to see what we can create in SketchUp. So we're going to model a tiny house. I haven't 100% figured out the design. We'll figure that out as we go. If you're looking for more great layout resources, Sources, make sure you check out the sketchupessentials.com slash layout. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so the interesting thing about modeling for layout is you have to model and group everything in a certain way and also put things on different layers in a certain way. And there's a few different schools of thought on how to do that. They're all kind of similar. There's uh, the Matt Donnelly, Nick Sonder method, which they talk about in their book. Um, I I, I like that method. I also like Michael Brightman's method um, that he talks about in the SketchUp workflow for architecture. You can check both of those out at the sketchupessentials.com slash layout. But I'm going to try to walk you through this as we go. So the first thing I'm going to do that I always try to do is I always try to start off by just drawing the outline of my floor plan. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and we're going to model this. It's going to be kind of a tiny house, like one of those houses that you um, see people pull behind their trucks and things like that. I haven't 100% figured out the layout, but we'll figure that out as we go. So to start off, I'm just going to draw a rectangle, and uh, I'm going to set the dimensions for that to be something like 10 feet by 20 feet. So that way we've got a 10 foot by 20 foot square right here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reverse these faces and we can go ahead and start off with this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we're going to go ahead and model our exterior wall. So in order to do that, I'm just going to use the offset tool to offset this in. And in this case, I'm assuming since this is a tiny house that these are going to be fairly narrow walls. So I'm just going to type in three and five eighths. I'm just going to assume these exterior walls are three and five eighths. That may not be accurate, um, but it will give us kind of a starting point. And so this is where we need to start organizing our model because what we want to do as we create these different items in our model is we want to group them because what we're going to do is we're going to take our groups and we're going to name them in our outliner and we're also going to put them on layers. And so generally speaking you model on layer zero and then you move things onto the layers that you want. So in this case, I'm going to start off, I'm just going to double click on this wall, I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to click make group. And so once I make this a group, you can see how my group actually shows up down here, um, down below. So that shows up in the outliner, which you can see in your tray. And if you don't see the outliner, you can go up to window, default tray, and click show tray. And that will look a little bit different on a Mac if you use a Mac. But what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to take this and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to rename it. And in this case I'm going to name this um, probably something like walls dash out or exterior so just something where I have an idea of what's in it and also where it's located and the exterior is going to be important because later on we're going to Later on, we're also going to create a group for our interior walls. But what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to take these walls and I'm going to put them on a layer. So I'm going to click on the plus button for add layer and we're just going to call this layer. Um, in this case, we're going to call it ARCH for architectural and we're going to call this exterior walls. And note that I talk about this a little more in depth in my course, um, the Sketch Essentials course. So uh, if you're looking for some really in depth training on this, make sure you check that out at the sketchpresentials.com slash course. But for now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put that on this walls layer. And so if you remember, the way this works is if you have a group, you can put groups on their own layer. So not only can you put like raw geometry, like if I was to draw a line right here and then click on it, I could click this drop down and put it on a layer. You can also put each individual group on a layer. And that gets really important when you start having multiple things in here that you want to have on different layers. So like your door swings and things like that. Um, you can put each individual group on a layer, which allows you to nest things and turn different things on and off. But in this case, we're just going to select this group for walls dash X exterior. We're just going to click the drop down. We're going to select the option for ARCH dash exterior walls. And I can turn that on and off just by clicking the I right here. And so the other thing I'm probably going to do, and uh, I'm always kind of back and forth on this, but for now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make my floor a group. I'm just going to call this floor and we're going to put that on a layer called floor. So ARCH dash floor. 
So that'll keep that from merging with everything else in your model. You can see how you can turn that on and off as well. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start modeling my interior walls. And so in order to do that, I'm going to start by kind of roughing out my space. And so one way to do this is you can drop a guide in here using the tape measure tool. So like for example, my back bedroom at the back side of this house is going to be six foot six inches wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, activate the tape measure tool make sure that create guide mode is on which you can turn on by tapping the control key and you can see how the little uh, the little two dashes in the plus show up when create guide mode is on and I'm just gonna click on this wall then I'm gonna type in six foot six inches and I'm gonna go ahead and model my guide out and so now that I have a guide in here I can use that in order to draw my uh, the line for my wall and in this case the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a corridor in here that we're gonna say is gonna be about we'll call it three feet wide so something like that well now I know if I was to come in here and model a wall it needs to come out to here and then I can just make this the thickness that I want it to be so in this case I'm gonna call it three and five eighths and I'm just gonna fill this in and so when I fill this in what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing I did before where I'm gonna come in here I'm gonna double click on this wall and I'm gonna make this a group and in this case, I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to rename it. And I'm going to call this one walls dash interior. And we're also going to create a layer for that. So we're going to call this ARCH dash interior walls. And if you're really, really anal about keeping or or um, keeping organized, what you might do instead is call this walls interior. And you could rename this other one walls exterior. That way, when you sort these by name, they'll, both your wall groups will be together. Um, not a big deal. It's just kind of an organizational thing. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take that interior walls layer or that interior walls group and I'm going to put it on this layer. So I can turn that on and off as well. And that gets more important um, a little bit later on when we have multiple different things in here. Since this is a tiny house, there's not a ton of other walls in here that we're going to work with. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and get those modeled out. And so the other thing I'm going to do is on the inside, I'm going to model another wall for my restroom. And in this case, we're going to say that our restroom is also three feet wide. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to go inside my wall's interior group. And since I know this wall is going to be the same length and the same thickness, I'm just going to use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy of this. So I can create this along the line. And you can see how that allows me to copy this wall across really easily. And then you can come in here and you can draw out the rest of your wall as well. So I'm assuming this is going to be 3 and 5 eighths. So we can draw that in here and then we can erase out these edges so that this is its own group. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rough out my door opening. So I'm just going to draw a line from here and we're going to assume in this case our door opening on a narrow how or on something narrow like this, we'll go, go ahead and say it's 24 inches wide. So I'm going to draw a 12 inch line here. And then I'll draw a 24 inch line this way. And we'll just kind of close that off like this. And we can go ahead and erase this out. So what we have here now is we have our two walls that we can push pull. And those are going to be in our walls interior layer. So now we have our walls kind of roughed out. And in this case, that's about all the walls we're going to have in our tiny house, I think. So let's go ahead and start moving on to the next uh, the next piece. So to start off, maybe I'll leave these guides on here for now. So the next thing I want to do is I want to start modeling out my doors and windows. So basically what I want to do is I want to come in here and I want to model out kind of like I did over here. I want to model out the rough location of my windows. So in this case, I'm assuming we're going to have an edge from here to here. And so this point right here, the midpoint is going to be about where my window is going to be. And so what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to double click inside my exterior walls um, section and I'm just going to whoops again just come in here and rough out where my walls are going to be so I'm going to draw a two foot line here because I'm assuming this whole window is going to be four feet wide and then I'll draw another two foot line here so and I'm just going to kind of leave that as is for right now basically what's going to happen here is when I push pull this up um, 
you can see how now I'm going to have this opening already roughed out. And there's a few different ways you can do this if you don't want to do this this way. Um, but in this case, I'm going to go ahead and that's how I'm going to do this. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this opening and I'm going to make a copy of it across here on the other side as well. And you can see how I'm doing all of this inside my exterior walls group. And so now that we've done this, let's go ahead and let's push pull our walls up. And so to start off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these exterior walls and I'm going to use the push-pull tool. And, you know, before I even do that, we're probably going to have a couple other windows in here. So let's go ahead and add those as well. So in this case, I'm assuming I'm going to have another 4 foot by 4 foot window right here. And again, I recognize that these may not be actually four foot by four foot. Um, I'm probably going to have a two foot by two foot window right here. So I'm just going to draw an edge in here. Um, so this will be 12 inches one way, 24 inches the other way. So you can see I'm just roughing out that same opening over here. And then I'm assuming I'm going to have the same kind of window over here across the way. And so now what I can do is I can go ahead and come in here and start push pulling my walls up. And so in this case, um, it looks like this went ahead and healed the face in inside my walls group. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that out, but then I'm just going to start push pulling these walls up. And in this case, I'm gonna pull, just push pull them up to eight feet. These may go a little bit higher a little bit later, but now that I've push pulled one up to eight feet with the push pull tool active, I can just double click on these different walls and you can see how SketchUp remembers how high um, the last time we push pulled something was so all I have to do is double click on these in order to extrude them all up to eight feet and so once you've done that if there's any extra lines like that one you can go ahead and erase them but now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and finish roughing out my window openings and so in this case I'm assuming that these windows are gonna be about we'll say three foot six inches off the ground so I'm just gonna draw a guide like this and I'm assuming they're going to be probably three feet high so you can see how I just drew two guidelines in here well now from the inside of my wall I can go ahead and I can push pull this up and a lot of the time what I'll do is I'll select this face and I'll just use the move tool in copy mode to copy this up and then I'll use the push-pull tool to extrude it down, kind of like this. So you can see how that allows me to rough out this window opening in my exterior wall really easily. There is some cleanup you're going to have to do. You're going to have some exterior line or uh, leftover lines in here, but it's really not a big deal in order to have to do that. And uh, so I'm just going to go around. I'm going to do that for all my windows real quick, and I'll probably speed that up, and then we'll talk about the next step. Okay, and so you can see the one thing that I kind of forgot to do inside my exterior walls group is actually model out my door. So I'm going to move my default model out of the way. I actually like keeping my default model in here because it's to scale. And it gives me, me an idea of how an actual person um, would be sized in here. But we can go ahead and start deleting out some of, these, uh, some of these guidelines. They're kind of in the way now. So we can start erasing some of these. We don't really need them anymore. But then the other thing I'm going to do, because I forgot to model those out, um, for my door is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to rough out the opening of my door real quick. So in this case for the door, I'm assuming it's going to be a 36 inch opening. And we'll go ahead and model this up to the same height as the windows. Generally, I like to see doors as more of a seven foot opening, but this will work for right now. And I'm just going to use the push pull tool. I'm just going to push pull this to the back side of this wall. Well, when you push pull this to the back side of this wall, what this does is you can see how this actually erases your leftover material in here. So when I push pulled this to the back side of the wall, it cut this hole. And so now our exterior walls are all modeled in. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn my exterior walls off for a second. Actually, I'll turn them back on but I'm just going to do the same thing for these interior walls. So I'm just going to take them and I'm just going to push pull them up 
to this height. And you'll notice that right here for this little door, you need to have something across the top here. A lot of the time I'll just draw a rectangle in here and I'll just push pull this down. And you can see how one issue you sometimes have is this push pulls this down so that it's hollow. Um, that's because it's moving your original face because you're push pulling it down. Well, if you tap the control key, that'll put you in create new face mode. And when you're in create new face mode, what that's gonna do is that's gonna create a new face instead of push pulling your existing face through and making this hollow. So I'm just gonna tap control, I'm gonna push pull this down 12 inches, and I'm gonna hit the enter key. And then I'm just gonna clean this up. And we're good to go. And so now what we have in here is we, we now have the ability, or we now have our walls roughed out and ready to go. And this video is getting a bit long, so probably what I'm gonna do next is, um, I think I'm gonna cut this video off right here. In the next video, we're gonna talk about adding doors and windows for layout inside of our model. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Are you following along so far? Are you using layout? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.